Welcome back. Today is Sunday, December 25th, 2022. This has been a rough couple weeks. We've had half days, snow days, three and a half week, and a lot of sickness. Actually, that's why I'm here, instead of our regular anchors. This is going to be a short show, but we wanted to bring one to you regardless. We won't have the usual snippets, and we'll be missing a couple of regular segments. Let's get started. Here's our newcomer, Dakota Souls, with his segment on the World Cup. Thanks, Dakota. Hi, I'm Dakota, and I'll be your host for Question of the Week. This week's question is, who do you think is going to win the World Cup? By the time you're seeing this, the World Cup will be over. Let's get some answers. Okay, Mally, who do you think is going to win the World Cup? France, Croatia, Argentina, or Morocco? Morocco. Good answer, good answer. <laughs> okay, Sam, who do you think is going to win the World Cup? France. Why? Um... Because I've been to France before and I think they're a great soccer team. Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? France. Why? She said that. I think uh, Morocco is going to win the World Cup. Why? Because they will beat Messi. Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? Really a toss up between Argentina and France. I don't know. <laughs> i go France because they're just a pretty solid team overall and they've won the recent World Cup, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay. I think that Argentina might win the World Cup because um, Messi, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I did have my sights on Poland, but that's out of the question now. And before Poland, it was America, but that's out of the question now. So I'm not following the World Cup anymore. All right, I, I really wanted Spain to win, but you know. They're not going to win because they're not in the finals, but Argentina is still in. I'm pretty psyched for that because Messi deserves it. He needs the World Cup. I'm saying Argentina because they're good. Say Argentina! Why? Why do the ice in Argentina? Because Messi. I think France is going to win the World Cup. Why? Because they are the best team. I think France because they have a good team. I think France is going to win because uh, they eat snails. I'm France because they're the best. I'm going to say France because, you know, I've been taking French. Yeah. yeah that was uh, I think France is going to win because my boy uh, Kylian Mbappe, he's the GOAT. So go France. I think France is going to win the World Cup because the flag has three colors. Yeah. Um, Argentina has to win, bro. Messi's gonna win it. He's gonna win his last tournament. I think he will. He has to, bro. It's, it's his last. He's the GOAT. I think Argentina. Uh, Argentina's gonna win because of Messi. Uh, I think that's gonna be Croatia. And just because I've been rooting for them the whole way, you know? Now for a couple of special votes. Okay, madame, who do you think is going to win the World Cup? going to win the World Cup. I wish, I, I really am so excited for the first African country to make it into the semifinals. It'd be so cool if it was Morocco, at least making it to the finals, but I got to say, I think it's going to be Argentina. Why? It's going to be Argentina and France, and I think Argentina is going to prevail because Messi is superhuman. Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? So, uh, so I've been wrong way too many times, unfortunately, because I picked Brazil to win it uh, uh, at the beginning. But uh, so I'm I'm going to go with Argentina to win it. Um, I think that they're playing really well right now, and um, you know they're on a mission. I think Lionel Messi's on a mission, so I'm picking them to win it, um, whether they play France or Morocco. So by now you know who's won the World Cup. Tune in next week for the next question of the week. Next, we have Apple with speed drawing. Then I'll tell you all you wanted to know about Arizona.
Thanks, Natalie. Now it's time for Leo and his music review segment, followed by Emmett and the video game review. Hello and welcome to It's Music. My name is Leo, and today we're going to talk about the 2000 Pony Vera album, For Emma Forever Ago, and the 2000 Pony Vera album, uh, Bon Iver, Bon Iver. Now this is a little confusing, because this is not the first time I've talked about For Emma Forever Ago. The first time I talked about that album was, I think, a couple months ago. My consensus was, this is a classic album, a lot of people like it, but... It, it maybe it's not the absolute best thing ever, you know. It's got it's, it's got its problems, even though it's got its great songs. Come into the room, but you know what? On second look, I like Fremma quite a lot. Fremma is one of those records where it takes a while to get. Once you get it, you get it. Something about listening to it on, on vinyl and listening to it a lot really, really helped me get it. These songs are more songs that you feel than you think about, you know. The ones that really have stuck with me, Lump Sum, Creature Fear, and Restacks, kind of the same ones as before, but those songs are they're so great. There are so many great things about them. Now, after now after Frema came out, Justin Vernon did not just sit around. He really capitalized on the hype of this record. He got out there. He said, give me a one-way plane ticket to Kanye West. Give me a one-way plane ticket to Rick Rubin. This guy made connections. This guy worked himself into the industry, worked with all these people. He got to a point where he could make his second album that does not sound like a like a stripped down acoustic folksy album like this one. Where he could make an album that's symphonic, that's big, that's like orchestral. It's got a bunch of instruments, bunch of new sounds. And that album ended up being Bon Iver, Bon Iver. On the first song, Perth, it starts out as something that could maybe be on an album like From a Forever, From a Forever Go. And then very quickly it reveals itself that it absolutely is nothing like that album. The end, the last like two minutes of Perth are like two of the most insane, awesome, huge sounding orchestral music I've ever heard. It's like, it could rival any like film soundtrack for being, being grand and making you say like, oh, Oh, this is cool. As the album goes on, it just kind of stays on that level of quality for a while. The transition between it and the next song is like amazing. It's like perfect. That next song is really great too. Towers has one of the most like huge, like euphoric, awesome climaxes of any songs. It's like it just suddenly turns into a different song and I'm happy to hear where it goes, you know? Holocene, a lot of people like this song and really get it. There, there are a couple other good songs too. And then the album ends in Beth Rest, which you're telling me that this is the guy that made songs like Flume and Skinny Love and now he's making Peter Gabriel style eighties power ballads with that kind of a, that kind of electric piano? Are you kidding me? This is awesome. This is one of the coolest songs I've ever heard in my life, mostly because of the context. From a forever ago. I've kinda like it a lot more. I think it's safe being like an eight. And Boney Bear is around that too, for different reasons. Boney Bear, Boney Bear is probably the better album if you want to listen to an album. But that's not saying anything about Forever Forever Go. I think it's kind of like a like an Astral Weeks Moon Dance thing. Astral Weeks objectively has like a better sound, it, but it's not as good an album as Moon Dance is. It doesn't have as good songs that work together as well. <laughs>
Now it's time for Gage and the recipe review. Followed by that, fake it till you bake it with Ember and Remy. Welcome back to Fake It Till You Bake It with Ember and Remy. And this week we made cheesy artichoke dip with sourdough bread. <laughs> Thank you. 
taste test. Mmm. That's good. Do we know home or Wow. That one's great. That one's great. We faked it. And we baked. Come back next week for more. Next up, we have Gabe with the history of World War I. Now we have Hyatt for a short skit for the week, and Ava tells us about holiday things in the Berkshires. No one wants to be my friend. No one wants to play with me. I'm gonna have to make my own friend this time. Hyatt was lonely, so they decided to make a man. And the man was made of snow, and they decided to put a hat on it. There must have been some magic in that Wario hat from the target. Because when they placed it on the mound of snow, he began to turn into a trash can. Oh, Samuel, the trash can was a jolly little thing. He just kind of rolled around a lot with no real ambiguity. Thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump, look at Samuel go. Thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump, over the mounds of snow. Thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump, look at Samuel go. Thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump, he is made of snow. Wow! A broken teddy bear! I can't believe it! My favorite mangled Barbie! Whoa! A lot of chewed up gum! Samuel, you really are magical!
finally, tonight we have Lexi with Missing Persons, followed by the weather. Hello, my name is Lexi and this is Missing People. The segment where each week I'll report on a different person who has disappeared. This week we have Amy B. Cher, a white female with brown eye and green eyes at the time for disappearance on October 18th of 2002. On October 14th of that same year, Cher left her job at the Lathy Clinic in Burlington, Massachusetts, saying that she hadn't been feeling well. The following two days, she had called in sick. At 10 o'clock a.m. on October 17th, her husband, Robert Desmond, called her boss saying that she would not be able to ro report to work again. The day after, he called her boss a second time, saying that he needed her email because, as he had stated, she was unable to do it herself. Minutes later, her boss received a letter of resignation from Cher. She hadn't collected her last few paychecks. Cher's boss had become concerned with the situation and contacted the police. When Desmond was speaking to the police about the incident, he stated that she had voluntarily left him. On October 18th, four days after she had last been seen at work, Desmond said that he had dropped his wife off at the train station in Massachusetts and hasn't seen her since. It has been noted by Cher's family that Desmond has a short temper and would sometimes physically and mentally abuse Cher. Cher's family had even gotten a restraining order against him, forbidding him to contact any of them and the other way around. However, the police found no holes in his alibi and forgot about the case. Her family had decided that they would hire a private detective to look into the case. They found out that she had a baby and kept it a secret from all of them. And when she had left, Desmond and her baby were living together. Cher wasn't reported missing until 18 months after everything had happened. Police believe the foul play is involved. If you have any information regarding her disappearance, please contact the Massachusetts State Police. Thank you for your time. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we hope you're enjoying your break. Have, Have a, a great, great week! week.